Hey, my name's Sean, and this is how I accidentally made national news with eight dollars, nine words, and like ten minutes. Perhaps the most damaging tweet from a fake account happened to pharmaceutical giant Eli Lilly. Insulin is free now. When Elon Musk announced that anyone could buy Twitter verification for eight bucks, critics were quickly like, "Yeah, man, that's not a great idea. You shouldn't do that," including his own team. But he did it anyway, and it went as expected. Yeah, that's Mario, the plumber from video games, flipping the bird direct from a fake Nintendo account. I saw these accounts popping up, and I was procrastinating doing my laundry, so I knew I had to make an account too. Since I'm a giant nerd who thinks about my job, writing for More Perfect Union, way too much, I knew I wanted the account to speak to corporate greed. But it's a hard decision when you think about corporate greed. There's just so many options. Like, just look at all these stories of executives putting profit over all else. But there's one thing that really stands out in the pantheon of corporate greed in the United States. Nearly 40 million Americans have diabetes. One in four people with type one or two diabetes are forced to ration their insulin because of the high cost, often hundreds of dollars per vial for the uninsured. But insulin doesn't cost that much to produce; sometimes as little as ten dollars a dose. That's more than I paid to make my Twitter Blue account. So I took out my Google and fingers and searched top insulin manufacturers. Yes, I had to Google it. That's how unplanned this was. I learned that just three companies control 90% of the insulin market, and I'll get to why that's super important and part of the problem. I took this old failed parody account I had for a fictional Mothman for West Virginia Senate campaign. That's why I was only following Joe Manchin and Laura Linney, who was in the Mothman prophecies. And I created an account for the multi-billion-dollar pharmaceutical giant Eli Lilly. I took no effort to protect my identity when I was doing this. I was not careful at all. Because again, this was not coordinated, and I'm not some mastermind. I only found out that babies don't drink water like six months ago. I threw the word "parody" into the bio. At the time, that was in complete compliance with Twitter's rules around parody, and wrote out a tweet so absurd that no pharmaceutical company would ever actually tweet it. We are excited to announce insulin is free now. Later, to drive home that it was parody, I posted again, did a retweet, and replied to some other users with helpful messages. Within a few hours, the post had thousands of retweets. Twitter changed their parody policy. Major politicians responded. Memes were made. The account was suspended, and the real Eli Lilly responded. No, they made clear, insulin is not free. But why not? It feels weird to make one of these videos that I make for work based on something I. Did with no planning in my living room, but this is the classroom from More Perfect Union. Insulin is a hormone produced by mammals that is essential to life. Some people, diabetics, don't produce enough. In 1921, when Twitter didn't even exist yet, I don't think a team of researchers discovered a way to extract insulin from animals for use as a medicine for humans—an incredibly important discovery. They probably could have made a lot of money on this, but instead sold the patent to a university for one dollar each. Because one researcher said, "Insulin does not belong to me; it belongs to the world." It wasn't meant to be a profit driver; it was meant to be a lifesaver. But in 1923, the inventors partnered with Eli Lilly for their expertise in producing glandular extracts. Eli Lilly got the United States patents for any manufacturing process improvements. In the United States, drug patents end after 20 years, meaning the drug can go generic and other companies can make it, and the price goes down. But the three insulin manufacturers coordinate and use a strategy called evergreening to keep the patents alive forever. They keep making improvements to insulin, honestly, often good ones, but very incrementally, meaning every improvement buys them another 20 years of the patent. It's an intentional strategy to keep the patents, and it also slows down innovation. Obsolete drugs are often discontinued and lose their FDA approval, which means the generic manufacturers can't make them. That basically means that these patents can be eternal. The companies will also add multiple patents to one drug by patenting different component parts. One form of insulin has 74 patents attached to it, and that's just one element of the problem. Pharmaceutical marketing. Influence over doctors and trade groups, the relationships between pharma and the insurance companies, and lack of regulation all help pharmaceutical companies price gouge Americans. 
When Senator Bernie Sanders quoted Eli Lilly's apology tweet and pointed out these pricing problems, Elon Musk himself stepped in and attempted to debate him, only to be fact-checked by his own website. Americans pay more for insulin than any other country. Elon's defense of insulin pricing came right after Twitter received angry correspondence from Eli Lilly, which ended up with them pulling all future advertising from Twitter, which is going to really hurt because pharmaceutical companies spend a lot of money on marketing. And that's why Twitter changed their verification rules. You don't mess with giant corporations, and you really don't mess with advertisers. I was hesitant to even make this video, because I truly had no idea how big of a splash the tweet would make when I posted it. And I don't really want to take credit. It's not a scoop or hot take that insulin pricing is ridiculous. It's a truth that millions of Americans deal with every day. The sad part is many people have reported on this before. Many politicians have tried to pass bills, but nothing has happened because the pharmaceutical industry has so much power. Elon Musk just gave me the power to put the righteous anger that millions of Americans feel towards this system into a single tweet. 83% of Americans think that prescription drug pricing is unreasonable. Even the Wall Street Journal, a publication dedicated to the interests of big business, highlighted the high costs of insulin. And a few days after the tweet, the CEO of Eli Lilly was asked about it and responded, it probably highlights that we have more work to do to bring down the cost of insulin for more people. And the replies to the real Eli Lilly's tweet were pretty heartbreaking. If so many people are so unified in their anger, maybe it's time to make a change. I know what I'm doing about it. I hope this works. Thank you so much for watching. We hit 100,000 subscribers right before this video went out, and we appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget to like this video, and if you haven't yet, subscribe. Throughout 2023, we're going to continue to cover corporate greed, worker power, and other stories that matter. And if you have a story on one of those topics you want to share with us, feel free to comment or reach out.